Hi, welcome back uh, to part two of our lesson on pollen diagrams. By now, you should have attempted uh, zonation of the two pollen diagrams uh, you've been given and possibly had to go at the study task that accompanies this as well. Okay, let's have a look at some uh, results and think about what they uh, mean. So this is our first pollen diagram. This is uh, from Chatsworth Bog in Illinois, and we can see we've got uh, a span of ages that stretches back to pretty much the end of the last glacial period. And we can see that there's been a distinct change in the vegetation community uh, in this area over this time period. Okay. Let me show you um, how I've zoned this diagram. Remember, this is my interpretation of it. Your interpretation may be a little different. That's fine. Um, this idea of zonation really is a, is a way of breaking down what can be quite a complex piece of data into more uh, manageable bite-sized chunks. Okay. We talked already about Zone 1, uh, a coniferous uh, spruce forest. The type of uh, vegetation community we'd expect now, perhaps in the far north of Scandinavia. You know, this is a, um, a, a northern vegetation community, one that perhaps represents cold conditions. That changes fairly abruptly at 13,000 years. I think for about another 1,000 years or so. So I've put zone 2 up to about 12,000 years ago. Now zone 2 is dominated by ash. So clearly the um, coniferous trees are, are much reduced at this point, And they've been replaced by a, a broadleaf deciduous uh, tree. This uh, uh, ash replacing it. Now that doesn't stay uh, stable for long. The ash numbers drop. And I've put zone three there where ash is being replaced by elm uh, and an increasing amount of oak. So we're up now to um, about 9,300 years ago. Um, and we have a broadleaf deciduous woodland. Clearly climatic conditions are quite uh, temperate, um, probably quite similar to what we see today. Now, I said earlier on in part one that I'm not terribly convinced by the zonations that are already marked on here. See, I put um, zone four then up to nearly 5,000 years ago. Uh, here we can see a, a woodland that is dominated by oak, uh, with a small amount uh, of elm and ash. But oak is really the, the key to this. Zone 5 for me goes to uh, about 3,800 years ago. Here we can see the oak decreasing. Uh, perhaps the forest breaking up uh, with more open areas, so there's more grass, uh, more ragweed. Okay. Zone 6, uh, we see the oak increasing a little, but really as, as the only tree. Uh, grass uh, diminishing uh, a little, uh, and perhaps a few other um, species like goosefoot taking over. The final zone then, from 2,000 years ago up to about the present, uh, we see uh, oak as the dominant tree, uh, but with other uh, herbs uh, at that time. So clearly this is a record of, of climatic warming over this time period. If we have a look at 
Our second uh, pollen diagram, also from Illinois, a slightly longer record uh, in this case. And again, we're looking to zone this uh, diagram and come up with an interpretation. And we can see there's a there's a really uh, some really significant changes revealed in this particular section. I've put zone one here, um, up to about fourteen thousand years ago. Um, large amount of of sedge, which is like a, a shrub, uh, and uh, some spruce trees, some coniferous trees. Zone two, uh, dominated by spruce. Uh, a short zone three here, where we see uh, peaks of um, trees like fir, poplar, ash, birch. Birch is always a, an indicator that um, conditions are changing. Birch indicates changing environments. It's a pioneer species. It's a species that will um, be the first to occupy uh, a newly vacated ecological niche. Zone four, we see um, uh, ironwood, elm, uh, and oak starting to uh, to grow. Zone five, uh, we start to see the dominance of oak. You know, as the as the climax vegetation community in this area. And then zone six, from about six thousand years on, uh, an oak woodland, perhaps with increasing amounts of of grass uh, as clearings develop within them. This diagram gives us uh, a pattern of change really going from uh, glacial conditions at the bottom of the diagram and seeing this very rapid change um, really from uh, 12,000 up to about 10,000 years ago we see a complete change in the vegetation community as climate warmed right at, at the start of the current interglacial, um, the vegetation changes really very rapidly. And from that period onwards, lar largely stable in terms of its vegetation, uh, dominated by oak woodlands, as would Britain be um, if it wasn't for the influence of humans. So, we can see that these uh, po fossil pollen uh, data give us a good indication, firstly, of changing vegetation communities. And as a consequence of that, we can start to interpret how climates must have changed over time. As a technique, it's very effective. We get good fossil records. Uh, it's relatively easy to collect the data. A um, little bit time consuming, but um, uh, it's, it's not particularly uh, difficult. And we can get a good continuous record from the right sediments. What we don't get, though, is an ability to quantify this change. We can't put numbers on this climatic change from this. We can get, we can be descriptive, but it's very, very hard to, to quantify. For that, we need to use other data. But that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.